The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is an 1820 Gothic story by American author Washington Irving, contained in his collection of 34 essays and short stories titled The Sketchbook of Geoffrey Crayon, Gent. It is mostly the tale of Ichabod Crane, the schoolmaster in the small town of Sleepy Hollow, and how the local legend about a headless horseman comes to intersect with a love triangle he is a part of with Bronn and Katrina Van Tassel. Should it really be called a love triangle though? Bronn and Ichabod don't want to bang, so really it's just a love V. Though the story is commonly accepted as having popularised the use of the pumpkin head at Halloween replacing the turnip, see our episode on the history of Halloween, it might be more familiar to most through its 1949 Disney adaptation and Tim Burton gothic nightmare. No, not the Dumbo remake. The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr Toad 1949 adapted the legend into a half hour short, packaging it with an adaptation of The Wind in the Willows of a similar length, because they're very similar stories. While Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow took many liberties with the plot and characters changing Crane from the local schoolmaster into a police constable sent from New York to investigate a series of murders committed by the undoubtedly real Headless Horseman. The most recent commonly available version is probably the 2013 crime horror series Sleepy Hollow, in which Ichabod Crane is reimagined as an English professor and turncoat during the Revolutionary War, who awakens in the 21st century and encounters the Headless Horseman, a fell mercenary whom Crane had decapitated 250 years earlier. I kind of always wanted to watch that series, but now hearing what it was about, that kind of sounds a bit shit, doesn't it? Despite all these changes to the source material, Sleepy Hollow, which is a real place, did indeed have its own real headless hessian. His corpse was found in the last week of October 1776, about nine miles from Sleepy Hollow on the slope of Merritt Hill after the Battle of White Plains during the American War of Independence. The Journal of the American General William Heath, who described his defence of Merritt Hill on the morning after Halloween, November 1st, 1776, records the following as his cannons opened fire at the approach of Hessian artillery. A shot from the American cannon at this place took off the head of a Hessian artilleryman. They also left one of the artillery horses dead on the field. What other loss they sustained was not known. He was later buried by the Van Tassel family in an unmarked grave in the old Dutch burying ground, the same area beyond which the fictional horseman in Irving's tale becomes harmless to you. It is said the shattered remains of his head were left on the battlefield hand, so he rises from his grave as a malevolent ghost, furiously seeking his lost head and wielding a jack-o'-lantern as a temporary replacement and or weapon. Modern versions of the story place his rides at Halloween, around which time the battle took place. Today a small monument topped with an antique cannon marks the site of the bridge over which locals must travel to safety and of the battlefield where the horsemen fell, and a sign nearby describes the historic significance of the location. Irving used the names of several real people in his story, including the army captain Ichabod Crane he met while Irving was an aide-de-camp to New York Governor Daniel D. Tompkins, and the Katrina Van Tassel, whose family he stayed with for a short time. Other sources of inspiration for the tale might have come from the setting he was in. Irving wrote the sketchbook during a tour of Europe, and part of the tale may also be traced to European origins. Headless horsemen were staples of northern European storytelling, Britain had the titular knight from the Arthurian tale Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, and a Scotsman named Ewan decapitated in a clan battle at Glen Kinnear on the Isle of Mull. The battle denied him any chance to be a chieftain, and both he and his horse are headless in accounts of his haunting of the area. Ireland has the Dullahan or Gan Cain, which literally means without a head in Irish, who is said to be the embodiment of Crom Doof, a fertility god who demanded blood sacrifices in the form of decapitation and still roams the roads, calling the names of those doomed to die and carrying his head under his arm, which is said to be decayed with flesh akin to mouldy cheese and holding in his hand a whip made from a man's spine. If you do see him, take note of his means of transportation. Sometimes he drives an immense black coach mounted by a coffin and drawn by six headless horses, and if that is the case, he may just go rumbling to your door to knock on it and throw a basin of blood in your face if you answer. What a scamp. 
Leaving Ireland behind, Scandinavia and Germany have the Wild Hunt, a soul-raving chase of souls of the dead, ghostly dogs, fairies, valkyries or elves, led by a mythological figure which may also have influenced the development of Santa Claus. The Dutch origins of the town of Sleepy Hollow are noted in many of the different versions of the tale, so it is very possible that Irving's inspiration was coming full circle. But one thing is for sure. If you see a headless horseman on a dark night, be warned. It could be an angry boyfriend. Just as an aside, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is considered one of the most important gothic tales in history, one of the greatest ghost stories there is, yet 90% of the story is literally just about Ichabod Crane trying to get his leg over with the school mistress, uh, and that's it. The ghost bit comes in right at the very, very, very end, very, very briefly. It's like a paragraph, and it's ambiguous as to whether it's even a ghost. That, that, that's it. The great American ghost story might just be a dude dressed as a pumpkin. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Spooky History. You can find us on most social media at Spooky His Show. If you have suggestions for future episodes, just leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and please do have nightmares. Goodbye. <laughs>